We know that food is a bodily need. Without it, we will not survive. But we have underestimated the importance of our emotional needs. Alcoholism is spiking among women in the last several years. And so that's something I really want to emphasize because uh, one, it's not cheap, first of all, but also we're not looking at women with the expectation of alcoholism. Research shows that if men um, have a dip in their financial status or lose a job, they are more likely to develop a common mental disorder like depression or anxiety versus women. Women are also stressed by losing jobs, but it has a harsher effect on men. Today, Dr. Anita is teaching us how we can overcome the war of our emotions. But before we hop into the show, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you can be the first to be notified every single time we drop a video. Now, let's hop into the show. Yo, Dr. Anita, you are back at the table. You were just here back in March, I want to say. Um, yeah. And, and back then we were talking about the brain and the body, um, and how the body responds to trauma. And mm -hmm. that show did extremely well. And then uh, me and you was texting back and forth. And we was like, yo, we need to do a show around pretty much exploring the conditions around like how therapy, mental impacts our finances and, and wealth. And I was like, you got to come back, especially with your book launching right now, because I yeah. really want people to understand the importance of really becoming whole, healed, um, mental, and how that is impacting your finances. So with your book coming out this week, I had to bring you on uh, to really just talk about this. But how are you? How are you feeling? This is launch week for you. Like, how, how are you feeling? <laughs> I feel great. You know, it's definitely that moment after you birth something and yeah. the pain is temporarily forgotten and you're holding it in your hand. Uh, Bishop Jake says that we can measure success by when what God put in us, we can see in our hand. Yeah. Yeah. When it looks like it looked when he gave it to us. Yeah. And I'm so grateful um, to God that this looks like what he gave me. Man, it listen. feels good. It feels I good. heard you speak for the first time, and then I just heard you speak at Woman Evolve, and, and you just killed it. But the first time I heard you speak, I said, I love her even more. I mean, you, I'm like, if this is what I'm going to get in the book, oh, I'm, 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 it's, I'm good. Like, I, I'm sold off the top. Uh, so we're definitely going to help you uh, push this book. Hey, you guys, we are going to be putting her book, The Garden Within, where the war with your emotion ends and your powerful uh, and your powerful life begins. We're going to put that in today's show notes. Please go get it. It actually just came out this week. This is uh, week one of the book, um, if you're watching it here in September. And so please go get it for yourself, but then also let's, let's support her. Let, let's get her to the New York Times bestseller list. You know, but I believe that God just wants to bless her so she can write another book mm -hmm. and then she won't forget about me down the road uh, you know, <laughs> when she blows up. <laughs> never that, never that. Family's always family. <laughs> you know, I want I want to talk. I want to start here uh, with today's conversation because in the last ten years of me really dealing around finances. I have a lot of people come to me with personal stuff that I can't reveal. Uh, but I, what I have noticed is one of the things that really um, impacts people from building wealth and it really impacts people from getting out of debt um, are addictions, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I have this question here because I really want you to talk into this from a therapist perspective. How can someone identify addiction? When, when is it important for someone to seek professional help for mental health issues affecting their finances? Because I could, I could just be here. I could say this with you. I've seen people come in and I'm like, man, I can't find money. But then I'll see porn addiction. I'll see drinking addiction. I'll see gambling addiction. I'll see all these addictions. And they are like, nah, I just like that. I just like doing this. It's not an addiction. How do we identify what is an addiction? And when should we really start taking that serious to help us get out of this issue so it's not impacting our finances? Uh, well, we want to look at a continuum of use. Mm. So setting aside the fact that some things we probably don't need to ever use at all, but just setting that aside for a moment, we use things, mm. food, pornography, shopping, to sometimes feel better emotionally, to regulate our emotions, to take stress out of our bodies. And so sometimes we use things, but then sometimes we are abusing them. Mm. 
You can misuse them, you can abuse them, and then addiction is kind of the furthest end of the continuum where you've not only lost control of the behavior, but it's no longer even bringing you the joy or the relief that it used to bring you. So if you're using more and more of it and it's bringing you less and less, you have likely stumbled into the addiction space. The use and misuse Uh, that's the thing that I want most people to look at. Are you misusing this? So maybe you're not addicted. Maybe you're not allowing it to eat up the rent money or um, your tithes and offering. But if you don't use it, you find yourself in a sustained state of emotional distress. Mm. You may then now be misusing it because you are attempting to regulate your emotional state in a way that is external to you yeah. rather than something that is happening internally with your body. Wow. And so that is really important to note because almost everything costs money yeah. and our emotional lives are central to our decision making. This has been a misunderstanding scientifically forever, but we now know neurobiologically, that emotion is foundational to decision-making. It is not meant to be extracted. It cannot be extracted. It's whether you're conscious of it or not. That Mm. is the only distinction between emotional decision-making or not. All decisions are emotional, including financial decisions, Mm. um, which if you've ever been to Target, we all know (laughs) emotions impact our financial decisions, but research shows 90% or so of our decision-making is rooted in our, where we are emotionally. You know, what if, what if, what if you're a friend and you see your friends forming this addiction? Mm. Should I be quiet? Should I, should I not say something? Should I say something? If I should say something, how should I bring it up to where I, I don't, I don't lose my friend because I, I get that mm. question a lot. It's like, hey, mm. I see my friend has a drinking problem or, hey, I see my friend has this addiction, but they don't identify it as an addiction. How can I, Anthony, bring this up? Because this is why they're struggling financially. It's not because they're not making a lot of money. It's not because they're they're broke. It's because they're spending it over here and, and I, I want to help them, but I don't know how to help them. How should we help our friends if we see something that they can't see? Quick pause from today's show. You see, life is a roller coaster of highs and lows. You see, when we're soaring, when we're on top of the world, when we're winning, it feels like we can conquer and challenge anything that comes our way. Like we can win, but let's be honest. When we're going through tough times, when we're navigating through a storm, it can be overwhelming, it can be depressive, and it could be hindering our ability to be the best version of ourselves. You see, over the last two, three years, I've learned the transformative power of therapy. You see, collaborating with a therapist can equip you and I with the insights and strategies to empower ourselves, helping us to face life hurdles with newfound confidence and power behind us. I want you to consider therapy. Uh, And while you're considering therapy, I want you to consider my friends over at BetterHelp, a top tier online therapy platform known for its accessibility, adaptability and affordability. I call it the three A's. You see, by filling out a concise questionnaire, you will be connected with a licensed therapist who resonates with your unique needs. The key word there was your unique needs needs. Moreover, the flexibility of changing a therapist if it's not working out for you is easy with BetterHelp and you can do this at any time because we want you to find the best therapist that's going to help you progress and move forward in life. Investing in our mental health is a step towards a more enriching life. Investing into therapy is a step towards you building long-lasting wealth. And to facilitate this, you can get 10% off your first month by visiting anthonyoneal.com forward slash therapy. Again, that is anthonyoneal.com forward slash therapy, or you can click the link in today's show notes. But the key thing here before we get back to today's show, start your journey towards self-empowerment today. And let's together resume our path to personal growth. Let's get back to the show. We can offer them help. Right. Mm. We can't necessarily help them, but we can offer help. And I think one of the keys is not to become so focused on the fruit because the addiction is a fruit. It's an outcome. That's a behavior. That's the last thing to form. It begins in our heart, in our emotional space and what's going on with us there. And so it could begin by just asking your friend how they're really doing. 
Mm. How are things with your family? How are things with your life, your friendships, work? What stresses might they be under? Let's go to the heart of the matter. What may be causing the emotional distress that they are then trying to alleviate with the misuse or addiction um, to some substance. Mm. That's, I think we, we mess up by going straight after the behavior. Mm. Hey, what are you doing versus how are you feeling? Mm. How are you feeling? Meet people in their heart space because we are gardens. God designed us to thrive that way. And the soil is our heart. That's our emotional space. So when we get caught up on the fruit, okay, fine. We pick the fruit of the gambling addiction, or we pop off the fruit of the pornography or the weed or the alcohol or the shopping. If that emotional distress is still present and we haven't gained the skills to regulate ourselves emotionally, something else will grow instead. Mm. That's also not healthy. Mm. And so we'll replace one thing with another thing and we can replace it with exercise. We can replace it with being a workaholic. There are then societally acceptable things that we try and pour into, but that doesn't make us more emotionally well. It just makes us addicted to something that people won't get upset about. That's so good. I'm curious, throughout your experience, what would you say are some of the top three or four addictions that you see impacting people's finances? Do you have any on mm. your end? I would say the actual addiction, the thing they're addicted to. The thing, yeah. Yeah, I would say shopping, spending money on entertainment. So kind of entertaining yourself, whether that's shopping, food, um, going out, travel, entertainment can be yep. an addictive behavior. It can definitely be misused, yes. extremely yeah. misused. And right. I think that's probably the best term for that. Um, pornography, online pornography is a tremendous huge industry. Yes. And uh, that is sucking up a lot of money when yes. people become addicted, online gambling as well. Yeah. Um, but also alcohol. Alcohol addiction is actually on the rise among women. And it has spiked. Wait, women? Alcoholism is spiking among women in the last several years. And so that's something I really want to emphasize because uh, one- it's not cheap, first of all. Um, and so it does consume money. But also we're not looking at women with the expectation of alcoholism. But it has absolutely spiked in recent years for women. There's not there's different explanations for that. The pandemic may be one of them. The time spent alone during the pandemic, maybe increased drinking then. We, we don't have it exactly, but we know the rates are up. Mm -hmm. And so that can consume money and then also limit or diminish my energy being poured into the things that increase my financial health. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at both sides of it. How is this bringing me down? And again, alcohol brings us into a muted emotional space. So many of this goes back to what's happening in our bodies. Yes. So for, it's critical for us to recognize that emotion is a bodily experience and that our regulation of our emotion begins in the body. You know, I was, um, every time I sit down and I don't do a lot of one-on-ones, I, I do, if someone reaches out to me, I, I'll sit down with them. But, but one of their requirements is to send me their bank statements mm -hmm. um, and uh, send me a, a budget, a zero-based budget, um, and then also send me their credit report. And then I'll sit down and I will walk them through, hey, here's how you're going to attack your debt. Let's go ahead and list all your income, list all your expenses, and boom, zero. And then I like to see their last three months of their bank statement so we can see what what are some regular subscriptions they have coming in and coming out. And in 2023, you're absolutely right. I see a lot of entertainment. And when it comes to pornography, I'm seeing in that area, it's only fans. And I'm like, wow. Like, I, uh, several times I've seen close to $1,000 a month in OnlyFans. And I'm like, but wait, you're only making $3,500 and you're spending this amount of money? Yeah, it's just, you know, da 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 And then alcohol. And I'm like, yo, you just dropped $400 on alcohol this month? And it I'm like, so we don't quickly. have an income problem. We, we, we have an mm. outgoing problem. And so... As I start asking them, well, why? And I, and I don't judge anyone um, at, at all for their situation because I'm, I'm there to help them because I'm not perfect. Uh, but I'm like, where is this coming from? Like, why do you think you need to spend this much money in these areas? 
And I would definitely say 50% of the time it comes from, I believe, and I can't diagnose it because I'm not that person. Um, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, but it, I think it comes from a place of depression, a place of, of, of they went through trauma and they're trying to cover it with these things. It could and be depression. I'm, it could be anxiety okay. um, as well, but it, it is emotional pain. That's mm. for sure. <laughs> and we don't know always what to do with our pain. And so when you're looking at that budget, when you're looking at the amount of money that's being spent, which is unlikely premeditated, I'm sure many of them have been shocked to find out how much they did spend. Yes. Uh, they are, <laughs> again, so you could say, okay, we're going to stop doing this. If you stop doing this, we can put this thousand dollars here. But Easy. let me ask you this. Would you look at their grocery budget? Oh my gosh, you're spending $500 a month on groceries. Stop that. Stop eating and let's put this money there. Would you ever do that? No, I would. No. And so, but the, I, the reason I ask that question is because we know that food is a bodily need. Without it, we will not survive. But we have underestimated the importance of our emotional needs. They are also biologically seated and biologically necessary. I need to feel connection. I need to feel safety. I need to feel love. I need to feel hope. I need to feel peace. When I don't experience any of those pleasurable emotions, my body is dysregulated in a way that makes me sick, that undermines sleep, that comes against my productivity, because we were designed to exist in a certain state. And that includes emotion. And so when you look at those things, you're seeing a food budget. This is my peace budget. This is my connection budget. You know, people engage in pornography for all kinds of things. Sometimes it's a physical sexual release, but some people are emotionally involved with the characters, with the, the women or men that are in there as if they know this person. There's so many different things that are happening there. So when we say, let's move this budget or let's move the alcohol budget, okay, that's fine. But how will you help them eat in that area in another way? So that's the problem with picking fruit. We just want to pop all the fruit off the tree. I have an apple tree in my yard. I don't want to have an apple tree in my yard. So I'm going to go pick all the apples off and carry them away. And now I don't have an apple tree. Oh, yeah, you do. It's going <laughs> it's to produce another crop of fruit. And so what is in the soil that is fertile for this thing to grow? That's the question. That's why we have to go back to that emotional space because we feel and then we think and then we do. Feeling, thinking, doing. It has been proven biologically over the last, oh, 15 years or so, starting around 2010, there was a huge shift in the neuroscience and neurobiological research that allowed us to understand that emotion is actually driving our lives and it is in a way that makes us unique from other animals, from other creatures, and it's not going away. Even evolutionists have given up on thinking emotion would go away because if emotion was something that was bad for us, it would have been selected out by now. And so its persistence means that science had to sit up and pivot and ask what is actually going on here? What is necessary about emotion? What is it about it that makes us human? And how has our misconception about it caused us to malfunction? And so you can't just take away the budget for needs without having an alternative direction for the needs to be met. And this is why financial distress and emotional pain and dysregulation are caught together in a loop. You gotta how do we take do it? care of your heart. How do we, how do we start Man. that right now? That's the question because mm -hmm. what you just broke down, you said I, you could take all the apples off the tree. You still got an apple tree. Still got apple tree growing. Still got apple tree because the, the root, because of the soil that feeds and I'm like, is that is, wow. Yeah. <laughs> how how do we, if, if I don't have access to a, a Dr. Nita Phillips, if I don't have access to a therapist, and y'all, you, you will have access to a therapist today because you're going to get Dr. Nita Phillips' book, and there, we're also going to give you um, um, a link to BetterHelp to where you can get access to a therapist and start their process today, ASAP. Um, but what what are some things that we can do, Dr. Anita, today? Because I think a lot of us, we know, okay, this is my problem, but we don't know what's in the soil that's feeding that problem. 
So are there some action steps or are there some questions? Are there some things that we could do to get to the soil to see, okay, wait, identify that because I don't, I don't do, or do we have to go see a therapist to really get really the true answer uh, about the soil of our lives? Uh, well, I believe you can change your relationship with your emotions right now. Good. That's something you can choose to do right now. That's why my book subtitle is Where the War with Your Emotions Ends and Your Most wow. Powerful Life Begins. Because when we call off the war we've been in with our emotion, we start moving into power. Power is I can choose to plant whatever I want in this garden, what I choose, and it will grow. Mm. That's power. Mm. Every seed is packed with power, with potential, and there's different seeds falling on the soil of our hearts. And so your words are being um, sent out over the airwaves and those seeds are falling on hearts. Take care of your money, make these investments. And sometimes those seeds are able to take root if emotionally we're open to it, if we believe what you're saying is possible, and if we have hope. If we feel hope, that is possible for me. But sometimes we are in such a state of sadness or fear or anger that it's difficult for those seeds to get what they need to start to grow. That sadness, that fear, that anger is keeping the soil fertile for some other beliefs, beliefs that I can't handle this right now. How do I relieve myself? And then the money starts going in the directions of possibilities for relief rather than let me slow down realize what I'm feeling, and we can talk about how to do that, recognize what it means, and then choose a healthy way to get the need met. This will change your entire life. When we are sad, we generally need connection of some kind. When we get sadness, it, sadness is the experience we have when something valuable, a person, a place, a thing has been lost or there's disconnection. And so we need connection. We want to feel that again. When we are angry, righteously angry, it's usually because someone has devalued something valuable, whether that was us, whether you devalued me or someone I care about or something I think is important. We get angry. If I see someone picking on a kid, I get mad. Why? That child is valuable. They deserve better. And so anger may be telling you, I need value. I need a sense of worth and value to be protected. And finally, fear. Fear says, I need to feel safe. And so when you recognize what you're feeling, what the need that it is communicating is, then you can start to think about how do I get this need met in a healthy way? Emotions are not a problem. It's our ignoring the problem, which means we ignore our needs until our needs overwhelm us because we haven't been getting them met in a healthy way. At the same level that we feed our bodies and give our bodies water, we have to get these emotional needs met to be well. I'm going to flip it on you. Okay. Because you said emotions are not a problem. It's just how we deal with the emotions. It's whether we listen to the need that they indicate. And then we can make decisions to get our needs met in a healthy way. So in the same exact way, hunger is not a problem. Okay. Hunger is not a problem. But yeah. if I go to the grocery store starving, yeah. research shows that I will purchase things that are less healthy for me. Absolutely. If you, if you have been angry underneath about something, you've been going home to visit three times a year, angry, angry, angry. You're not allowing yourself to be honest about that, to recognize what you need. And then one day... Somebody says something at the dinner table and you blow up, then people say, oh, they let their emotions get away with them. Oh, they overreacted. They emotionally reacted. No, they just, the need hasn't been met in so long that finally our body pushes us to have that need met in the same way I shouldn't go grocery shopping when I'm starving because I'm supposed to eat on a regular basis. When I'm fed, I make better decisions about my food. But when I'm starving, I'll eat anything. So we have to stop allowing ourselves to reach the point emotionally of starvation. And we think because we have disconnected from our bodies and put our minds somewhere else and we don't feel it right this minute in our awareness that the motion's not there. But it's there. It is there. Here's the flip. And I could be mm -hmm. I could be dead wrong. This is why you're the doctor. And you could check me on my show all day long. Uh would you say men struggle with that more than ladies? Yes. I think that men have a longer journey. Yes. 
from where most people are now to the understanding that I'm describing. I think they may have a longer journey or maybe just a harder journey in the sense that the socialization says men are not allowed to emote and that women are allowed to. I think that women also disconnect from their emotions plenty um, and men too, but there is more room in the culture for women to emote than there is for men. That's absolutely true. And men tend to deal more with anger. Yes. And women tend to deal more with fear. And we're dealing more with anger because we're Mm -hmm. not acknowledging that we're missing something and we didn't feel it. We didn't. There's a need. There's a need. And we didn't Mm -hmm. give that need. Yeah. But we've suppressed that need. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it blew up. Mm-hmm. Only because we didn't, we didn't feed we it. We were starving. You were starving. Yeah. And that anger, when it's pure anger, is about value. So men, and, and particularly black men in a culture that does not afford them respect at the same level as men who are white, um, there can be this that constant buzz of anger. And when it comes to employment and finances, research shows that if men um, have a dip in their financial status or lose a job, they are more likely to develop a common mental disorder like depression or anxiety versus women. Women are also stressed by losing jobs, but it has a a harsher effect on men. And so we know Mm. that that is really important for us to understand. And again, goes back to the cycle. If I'm emotionally distressed about my finances, but emotional distress makes it hard for me to bake clearer decisions. It's just, it becomes a cycle. And so we have anger from that perspective, but then anger is what we call a secondary emotion. It has the capacity to rise up to protect us from other feelings. So anger will rise up to protect me when I'm sad or rise up to protect me when I'm afraid. And since men have less social space to be sad or afraid, they are often in a state of anger that is not only a primary state for being feeling devalued, but a secondary state as a defense against sadness and fear. And so it's just devastating. And then what does anger do to the body? When we're angry, our parasympathetic nerve, I'm sorry, our sympathetic nervous system is activated. That's what we call the fight, flight, freeze system. And most men have been socialized for fight. And so when the sympathetic nervous system is activated, my heart is beating faster, extra blood sugar, glucose is being released into my blood. And so now I got to worry about blood sugar, blood pressure, um, uh, physical issues with my intestines because um, stress also does that. And so then we begin to see the uh, physical health issues that so many black men have. We, I've said this, I think the last time we were together, when we're looking at how a people is doing in terms of their mental health, we should also first maybe look at their physical health. And so men are then struggling with that. So anger is really a central um, challenge in men's lives. And I think women struggle with this as well, but I, the effects of men are unique because of that narrow um, window or, or space of emotion that's allowed to be expressed by men. And anger and aggression are allowed. Sadness is not allowed. Fear is not allowed. And that leaves them struggling because they have fear and they have sadness because we're all human. I was in a small group with a bunch of men and I'm only saying this because it's a safe place. It's my show and it's my dear friend, Anita Phillips. So I'm, I'm not even going to read the comments after this because I know they're going to come after me for this one. Uh, <laughs> but I was in a, I was in a, a small group of successful young black guys. And one of them said that um, he was, um, I'm not going to say any names, but he, he said that he and his wife have not been intimate because his money was different. And he said that, man, when I am at a low point financially, it's hard for me to focus on other things. And he says, man, believe it or not, I'm not, I'm, I don't desire intimacy because I don't see how can I make love to my wife and I'm struggling over here for our family. And I asked him, I said, so what do you do? And he says, man, I work harder. Mm. And I'm like, and I asked myself, 
And this is a question to you because I, I get, I totally, 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 100% agree what you said. When the man's bag, when the man's income is is not to where he think it should be, it does put us in a different place. And there is a need that needs to be filled there. Some men react differently than other men. But, and, I, and I'm trying to watch what I say because I, I just know my audience. They'll be like, Anthony! Mm-hmm. But, you know, but it's but like... But I, I hear a catch-22 that happens there. What I mentioned that I hear I mentioned that men, anger tends to be more destructive for men. Fear tends to be the Achilles heel for women, right? Mm-hmm. So the, mm-hmm. when we are working on safety, fear is about safety, emotional safety, physical safety, and so pursuing that safety. And men yeah. tend to pursue that um, value and that respect. Right. But when a man is feeling like his value has diminished for some reason, yeah. and particularly if it's financial, but if a sudden financial drop also means we may be less safe as a unit, and he also cares about that. And so let's not forget, like I said, anger is often a secondary emotion. It's a way to cover for the fear that he may also be feeling or the sadness that he's feeling. But anger may be his shield against those emotions. But then women, when we are triggered on a deep level, that is fear. It's not fear that you won't provide. It's not fear that you, but just generally things are unsafe. They need to be moved. And so now we've got both of us in our kind of worst state. Mm feeding each other. And so I think it's too harsh to just point the finger in one direction or another. Like, oh, if his money goes down and now she don't respect him and it's fear is involved, anger is involved. Now we're in this catch 22 that keeps running. And so both people um, need to be able to work on getting in touch with where they are emotionally. Because the man is going into problem solving mode. The woman's going into problem solving mode. Everybody's in emotional pain. And when we're in emotional pain, it's harder for us to be connected to other people. Mm. And so that hurts the emotional intimacy. So that starts floating apart. And eventually that breaks up the sexual intimacy. Yeah. Um, but we have to look at it as a cycle. Everything that happens in a couple is a system product. It's not he fell off and she didn't wasn't there for him or she did this and he it's a system product. And so we have to look at it as a system. And then the couple say, we have a problem confronting us, not who's the problem, you're the problem. But that's when we are really often in trouble because all our childhood trauma and all of our other things have us in this emotional space. What can we do to be honest about where we are emotionally? Step out of problem solving mode for a minute. Mm-hmm. Mm. And let's talk about how we feel because we go straight into problem solving mode and we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. And, you know, many times and this is consistent often in the black community that black women have higher levels of education, that they are earning more money. And so that can throw things off if he's feeling less valued because he's not able to earn as much. No matter what she says, it's cool. We're good. We all have to deal with what's happening on the inside of us. And so getting in touch with that emotional space is really important. How do I feel right now? Mm. Am I angry? Am I scared? Am I just brokenhearted? And how do I begin to process those emotions so that I can shift into another, a better, more productive emotional space? Your pain is valid. Your pain makes sense. Uh, But so many men are holding on to so much pain because they don't know how to move when they can't solve the problem quickly. You know what? Dr. Anita Phillips, you talking good right now. And you got me thinking. You got me thinking. Yeah, good. What's standing out for you? Yeah, because it's like, like, you know... (sighs) Our, one of we, our mutual friend Sarah Jakes, um, she mm-hmm. came on my show uh, a few months ago, and she kind of called me out on some stuff. Well, she didn't call me out; she asked me a question, and she asked me the same thing you asked in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, she and it's like, that. Anthony, why are you still single? Da, da 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 da. And I think one of the reasons why I'm still not struggling in that space, I'm definitely moving forward, is because. I want a place where I can be truly emotional with my my woman. And mm-hmm. I think that sometimes in relationships in the past, I've never felt like what you just said. 
I can talk about how I feel because if I said how I really felt, I don't know if it's gonna come off the right way to you. And so what I did was I acted strong and I'm like, no, I'm good, I'm good. But really on the inside, let's be real, I, I was a little insecure about something, but I didn't feel as if it was a safe place to say, hey, I'm feeling this way. Can we set aside everything else and just talk about my feelings? And then once we understand my feelings, then let's come up with the solution. Normally it's, if I say I feel this way, sometimes men are attacked for how they're feeling. Can and you I'm give like, me an example of that attack? Because I hear that a lot when they're just like, she'll use it against them, she'll attack them. So can you give me an example of what that actually looks like? Let me find a safe one. Because I'm just, it's hard for me to believe that women are just running around here like, what you mean you sad? No, no, no. Well, let you me sad, say this. you let punk, me, you let, sad? I mean, what do you mean by attack? No, no, let, <laughs> let, 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 let me, let, let me say this. It's not, um, okay. it's not, it's not all women, but I'll definitely say this. So I was in a particular magazine, um, and they acknowledged me for being one of the top 40 under 40 um, influential people, influential black people in America. And at that time, I was with, um, uh, I, I'm trying to be very wise here, I'll say my words. I was with a particular woman who was in a relationship, and this is her exact words to me. She was making more money than me, and she said, that's nothing, I expect you to do that. You're a man. Mm. So I simply, at when she said that, I said, yeah, 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 I got you, I got you. But internally, I was looking for my woman to like, babe, that's a huge accomplishment. Babe, I'm so proud gotcha. of you. Babe, babe you know, like, I, I back you. But because she was already successful, she was like, boy, I'm, ar I'm already winning. You need to be winning. That's good. Do your mm -hmm. thing. But it's like, there was no... And here's the thing that, that flipped me. My mama called me. <laughs> you know, my, my pastor called me. My, my sister called me. But the woman who I'm trying to build a life with was like, boy, I expect you to do that. And so mm. for me at that time, I was fearful to express my feelings because what, she, what I got from her was, you're a man. You're supposed mm. to be doing that. Gotcha. And this man was like, dang, I needed my woman <laughs> to kind of be encouraging, to be to be supportive, to 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 be my number one cheerleader, but I never told her that. And if mm. she's watching today, this is probably gonna be the first time that she'll see it because at because we, we broke up. I never mentioned anything else to her about it. But that's what I mean. It feels that sometimes men, we want that nourishment. We want that supporter. We want to feel like we are Hercules to our woman. We don't never want to feel like, oh, but I expect you to do that. And we understand that there are expectations to being a man. But you have kids. I, I have nephews and niece. Yeah. They know they're supposed to bring home A's and B's. But even when they bring home A's and B's, I don't say, that's what you're supposed to do. I'm like, good job, boy. You know what? He go a little five dollars. You know, he go some ice cream. I'm proud of you. That's what you know. The Gibbons and the Henrys and 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 you know O'Neills. That's what we do. But here's still some encouragement. And I think sometimes men, we're so used to not being celebrated that we put our feelings aside and we keep on moving. And that is something that I want in my marriage. I want inside of my relationship. And that is hard to find because people feel like, oh, but you're Anthony O'Neill. Oh, you're AO. Mm. Man, you go no, 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 no. Bishop Jay said this at the leadership conference. I'm still little Anthony on the inside. <laughs> I'm we all still are. a little We're kid. All still a kid on the inside. You know what I'm all saying? of us are. All of us are. Yeah, <laughs> and so that's okay. Yeah. I, give me a little bit of if you my woman, give me hype. I don't expect that from my team members. I don't expect that from mm -hmm. but my woman? No, I'm gonna need you to 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 talk to little AO in there. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. And and I'm sure that if she is listening, reflecting on that. She probably didn't hear it at the time and might hear it now right. um, and, <laughs> and maybe be able to learn from that. Uh, we all come from places that especially, I think, not especially, but in a certain way, uniquely in the black community, we come from some generations that were just very 
work oriented. Mm. This is the work. This is what you do. You know, many of us, I'm almost 50 years old, so didn't grow up with parents that were just constantly like, oh, I just love you so much. Yeah. And I saw this um, funny uh, Instagram video the other day about like black moms when they know they're wrong and they had went off on a kid that come in the bedroom is like, hey, did you still want that video game? Uh, or, you know, and the kid was like, no, nah. it's like, oh, now you don't want it. Like, you know, just not. <laughs> So we, because of many things, some things are, are cultural, some things, the pressures that we've lived under, we haven't been in a place where it may have felt safe to be vulnerable emotionally, but we, it's something that I'd like to see us build. Yeah. No. And, and that's so true. first and foremost, though, each of us getting in touch with our own emotions, bless you. Thank you. <laughs> each of us getting in touch with our own emotional lives. And then before we go, I want to make sure I talk about how to start doing that. Please. Um, and then being willing to start to use the language of need yeah. when it comes to our emotions. Because we're quick to say what we think we need to solve a problem, but not realizing what we actually just need emotionally. And to be so okay with that, that I can say to someone, hey, I need to have some words of affirmation. I need, you know, that hug right now. I need to feel more connected to you in this moment. I'm scared. I just need to feel a little bit of assurance, a little safety. And to be able to use that kind of language, um, it's vulnerable. But the more in touch we are with, okay with, and embracing of our own emotion, the less threatening that becomes. Because then it's like, my needs are legitimate. And if my needs can't be met in this relationship, then that doesn't make me the problem. It just means that this system doesn't run well. Um, we can work on seeing if the system can be improved. And if it can't, then this might not be the relationship. Because when it comes to romantic relationships, the Gottman research, um, Gottman Institute research shows that 70% of a marriage is friendship. Ooh, and many of us aren't very good at being emotionally vulnerable with our friends. Ooh. Much, And then we want to get into a romantic relationship and say, well, this is the one place where I should be able to be emotionally vulnerable, you know, because this place. But we haven't practiced that. We don't have capacity for it in our friendships. Our mm. friendships are one of the best training grounds for mm. us in emotional connection mm. because 70% of marriage is friendship. Mm. And that doesn't mean just I like you, but... There should be some emotional connection and vulnerability with your friends. I can say that to my friends. Like, I'm girl, it's rough today. I, mm. What you been doing today? Crying. Crying. Mm. That's what I've been doing. And allowing myself to be vulnerable with my friends. If we don't have those kind of connections with friendships, then we all of a sudden try to rev it up in a romantic relationship. We don't know how to do it. And so we show up in a romantic relationship expecting all of this stuff that we didn't have in a friendship. We need to work on that. With our friends. Wow. That's real. And yeah. I probably only have maybe one or two friends in my friendship circle that I feel as if I could be 100% honest and vulnerable with. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and, it's, that, and it's because we're both honest and vulnerable with each other. Yeah. It's not just a one-way thing. Right. You know? And right. it's like... You see that. Uh, yo, we... Y'all, we're going to get her book. Um, we're going to put it into yes. the show notes. But what, because I really want to leave with that, because you said you want to give people just some clear directions on how to start identifying. How they can start. Um, yeah. And, and I want to make sure that we give them that before the end of the show. Um, so after she gives you all this, you guys, please go get her book. Um, and don't just get, don't just don't get her book. Listen to her podcast. Um, and uh, subscribe to her, follow her, because I'm telling you right now, uh, Dr. Anita Phillips is literally in the top 10 people I love in the world. Like, I just oh, I love her you. spirit, her heart. Her husband is absolutely amazing, doing amazing things with Bishop T.D. Jakes. And um, what Dr. Anita brings is authentic. It is real. Um, and I promise you, it will change your life. I, I will never forget, my mama called me years ago. Have you heard of Dr. Anita Phillips? I said, I think I heard of her Thanks, husband. Mom. I never really followed her. She's like, boy. You need to go look her up. And ever since then, I've been a fan of hers, and she's become a dear sister. And uh, so I love that. But real quick, Dr. Anita, what, how, how do we start the process to identify this? Because I think that's important for us. And I don't want to end the show, like, you're, like you said, uh, without giving those, giving those practical steps. 
we got to come out of our heads and drop down into our bodies. Mm. Emotions are not intellectual experiences. They're not created by thoughts and they're not solved by thoughts. Yeah. Emotion begins in our autonomic nervous system. Yeah. Autonomic as in not controlled consciously. <laughs> they begin in our autonomic nervous system and in our bodies. And so I encourage everybody at least once a day, preferably when you first wake up is a good time to just be still and just scan your body, almost as if you were inside looking around. What do you feel in your body? Mm. Sadness often shows up as a heaviness around the heart, arms and legs being heavy, not feeling like moving. We often feel fear, anxiety, stress in our, in our gut, in our intestines. Um, we might feel stress in our neck or tension, or we might wake up excited about the day, feel butterflies, feel yeah. a little bit of lightness behind our eyes. Whatever it is, I open my eyes every morning. I thank God I am alive. And then I go straight into my body. Wow. Where am I this morning? What am I feeling? Because very often our emotions will be right on the surface at the beginning of the day. But we jump out the bed, go to the bathroom, start moving, and then it sinks down and we don't feel it aware with our awareness, but it's still there running underneath. So what's going on with your body? Feel that. Just take 30 seconds and allow that to flow to the surface. And if something is painful, you don't need to try and start problem solving or anything. But just, I feel, this feels like anxiousness. Mm. This feels like irritability. This feels like whatever. And grab yourself an emotion wheel, Google that. You can see all the names of emotion. But a lot of times we go straight to the emotion words to try to say how we feel. That's intellectualizing our emotion. We don't actually want to experience it in our body. Mm. Once we get here and start thinking about it, then we start trying to problem solve. And why do I feel this way? What can I do about it? Stay here. Mm. Allow your body to process. And so we good. don't like to do that. Because if we sit still long enough, we might start crying. If we sit still long enough, we might feel angry. We might get scared. And we think if we feel those things, we won't be able to function. But that is a lie. Mm. When we allow the emotion to flow through, emotion is like water in the garden. If you let it get backed up, it'll flood everything out. If you don't have enough, it's dry and nothing can grow. So we yeah. need to allow it to continuously flow. Yeah. Start with your body. How are you feeling and what do you need? Do you need some connection? Do you need value, worth? Do you need safety? And there are ways to get that, even when you can't change your situation. It yeah. could just be talking to a friend. It could be going for a run. It could be sitting down and just spending 60 seconds doing deep breathing exercises that will shift how your body feels emotionally so mm. that you can think more clearly. If you're struggling to think clearly, it's because you're probably feeling something deeply. Go to the heart first, and that will clear your mind for every kind of decision, including financial ones. I'm doing that in the morning. Do it. I'm going to do it. Right I'm going to do it. I, I'm going to commit myself to doing that for the next 30 days for the rest of this month. Do it. And I, I want to challenge you all to do that as well. Join me in doing that. If you're going to do that, I want you to drop in the comments and say, I'm going to do it. Just put, I'm going to do it in the comments uh, because I think that is, you're right. I'll get up, go use the bathroom, turn on some music, get ready to work out, check Instagram, look at this. Mm -hmm. But I never really assessed myself. How do I really feel? Wow. Yeah. And those feelings are still there underneath. And still guiding decisions, and they always will, but I need to know where I am. And whether you do it in the morning, but also if there's problematic behaviors, if you are misusing or abusing something, pornography, weed, alcohol, when you're getting ready to engage that thing, see if you can sit still for 60 seconds or 120 seconds and see what starts happening in your body. It's that anxiousness we feel when we pick up the phone and start scrolling. We do it so fast. Because we're trying not to feel something and our emotions are trying to get our attention and we immediately were gone. Yeah. Just be still for a minute. Sometimes when I'm with my phone, I put a post-it on it that says, why? Ooh. And when I catch myself reaching for it unconsciously, that I have to see that. Why? And it's just like, no reason at all. Why? Put the phone down <laughs> and then sit there and just be like, why did I even do that? Was I working on a paragraph in my writing and started feeling stressed about that paragraph and that stress sent me... I wanted to get out of that moment. It's the little things. Be still. Yeah. That will be your step one. Be still. And then in the book, we'll, we'll dig deeper. Yo, the book is digging deeper, you guys. So 
We're going to put it in today's show notes. Go get a copy. Get your book. I promise you um, it was amazing. If you were at Women Evolve, um, I want you to know, put it in the comments. Let me know if you saw her. Uh, let me know if you even got a book, um, you know, because I really want to know um, how much we all love Dr. Anita Phillips. So uh, we'll put all her information in, show, in today's show notes. Thank you so much, my sister. We love you. You're welcome on the table Thank anytime. You. I mean, anytime. Just, so just text me. We'll have you on the next week because you just come on here dropping all these gems. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Got me over here crying a little bit. I'm like, Lord Jesus. Uh, but I love Good. you, sis. <laughs> love you too. Love y'all. We'll see you on the next show. Peace out. <laughs>